everybody. Welcome to the BYOAR T350 show. Let me uh, bring up my feed here so I can see everybody and see who's with me today. All right, I'm good. My camera guy is going to check the sound real quick. Russ, how you doing, bud? should have sound I mean I'm on right what do you say Russ do I have sound morning Brian still morning for you oh well yeah I guess it is only about noon out in Oregon <laughs> let me uh, see here let me click my sound and Yep, I got sound. Okay, I'm good. All right. So again, welcome everybody. Uh, we'll take a few minutes here and let the audience build, see who's going to pop in on us today. Again, welcome everybody. There we go. <laughs> Brian just ordered everything for a new truck gun build this morning, yeah? If you can find all the parts to build a, a gun, you're doing good. It's uh, it, I was doing some build sheets this morning, and man, I'm telling you, the the stuff that's out of stock is unreal everywhere. Just everywhere, it's hard to find stuff right now. If you uh, if you're looking for stuff and you can and you find it, you better buy it because <laughs> you go back in an hour and it could be gone. Um, Receiver sets, bulk carrier groups, barrels, you know, all of the really important stuff is re really hard to find right now. So uh, the, my best advice, and I put it on some build sheets this morning when I was, you know, telling these guys, uh, you know, get your name on the waiting list. If they got to uh, notify me when back in stock, get your name on there and uh, be ready. Be ready to move if you're if you want it. Yeah, Brian had to use five different places to get enough stuff to build one gun. And... Uh, you know, I, I, three months ago, you could do one-stop shopping. You could go to Primary Arms. You could go to Palmetto State. You could go to Rainier and put, get everything you needed, put it in your cart, check out, and you were gone. You could do it in about 15, 20 minutes. And now you'll spend half a morning searching for <laughs> enough parts to build a gun. Um, so uh, I, am, I'm, I forgot to build my uh, cheat sheet, my, uh, my prompter sheet for today, so I'm kind of winging it a little bit. I'm looking at last week's sheet and trying to uh, get everything in for this week. Um, so uh, last week uh, we talked about, uh, we did a brief history of uh, the AR-15. Uh, you know, told you everybody how they, you know, this thing actually went back into the 50s and how it progressed through the years and uh, how it got to be to the, the gun that we know and love today. And, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about an upcoming giveaway for Labor Day. Uh, we're we're going to see if we can coincide our, our thousand member, get to a thousand members and uh, do a giveaway at the same time. Um, we're, uh, we're at 900 and just about 940. So we're about 60 people shy of that thousand number right now. So uh, we've been gaining about six, seven, eight a day. So it looks like everything might come together to do a real nice giveaway for next week for Labor Day and uh, for a thousand members in the A Architect group. So uh, this week's deal um, on our website, last week we did uh, A2 upgrades. This week we're doing the toolkit, the full build toolkit to kind of coincide with the uh, building tips and tricks that we're going to talk about today. Um, so you can get the full build toolkit for $10 off on our website. Uh, in fact, we just sold one of those this week. We, in fact, it's shipping out today. Um, gentleman bought uh, a rifle kit last week and then came back and bought a full build toolkit so he could build his rifle. So, uh, and, and I talked to him this morning. Uh, he was asking about, you know, resources to help him with that. And we are working on, uh, building a catalog of videos to, uh, Help with that so you guys can just watch videos and uh, build along with it and we're still trying to do get a, get together build alongs uh, with everything's going on in the world and coronavirus it's been a little hard to get everything together to do that 
but we are still working on that. I, I hooked him up with some links of some videos on YouTube to watch. Um, Midway USA has a fantastic library of AR build videos. Um, and we also, in the A Architect group, we have a live chat room. You know, I told him if he runs into trouble, hey, pop in there and, uh, you know, hit me up, pop in there, and I can help talk him through anything he might run into, any trouble he might run into. A neat little feature there. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about building tips and tricks today. Things, uh, the little hacks, the little things that we do that we get to know how to do over the years of building these things. And uh, I, I still learn new stuff all the time. I, I've learned a few new things here recently and um, I always like to share the stuff with the guys. You know, and it makes life easier when you're trying to build these things. Uh, really the first two rules when you're ready to build a rifle is uh, one do your research um, know what it is you want uh, begin with the end in mind as they say right figure out what it is you want the thing to look like what you want to do with it and how much you want to spend and go from there and work backwards um, you know and then once you have all those things in mind and you kind of know where where you want to end up it's a lot easier to get there uh, going back and starting at the front then so uh, do your research and know what it is you want to buy what you want to want your one what you want your rifle to look like when you're done and then the second th and the second kind of cardinal rule there is the right tools to build and maintain the right tools to do the job right um, you know you you can build one of these things um, uh, yeah, I, hey, yeah, Russ, a mentor's link. I saw that, uh, I think it was on uh, Chris's page, PM, the poor man's black rifle page. I think it was that they did that. That was a pretty cool idea. I helped a couple guys out. I, I signed up for that. That mentor program was, uh, you guys, can, you know, people can sign up to be mentors, and then people have questions. They can pick a mentor and, you know, start asking them questions and uh, hook up with them, and, you know, then you're getting, you're getting information from one guy that uh, is is knowledgeable you know um and having a, a mentors having mentors vent, vetted a little bit that you know the guys that i know or that people know that you know certified armors and so on and so forth making sure you're getting good information is really the key to that but yeah that's something we could look into doing on the page as well um so uh let's see i got a little sidetracked i was talking to, oh um having the right tools to do the job right um you know having a good vice having uh starter punches and finishing punches you know having the right uh tools to hold your parts so that you can get a move them around and work with them and do what you want to do um the right tools are invaluable and you think okay well i'm going to spend a lot of money building or buying these tools and i'm going to build a gun and i'm not going to you know what am i going to do with these tools um I use these tools all the time to replace parts, upgrade parts, maintain my rifle, uh, clean it. You know, th these tools come in very, very handy all the time. You you won't just use them for building. You'll use them again and again and again. And, uh, you know, your buddy decides he wants to build one. And, uh, yeah, Brian here, he's a retired gunsmith with 30 years. He'd be a great mentor. Um so, you know, you, you, you'll use these tools over and over again. Uh, don't be afraid to spend a little bit of money on the tools. They will come in handy. You will use them, and you will get your money out of them. So uh, let's get into uh, talking a little bit about some of the tips and tricks we do. Um, so I got a little list here, and I'm kind of go through them so I don't forget anything and, and make sure I hit some key points. Um, some of the things I've heard people talk about on some of the different forums I tried to key in on, uh, you know, gas issues, those different type of things that are really common problems and that people struggle with. Um, you know, inserting a barrel into an upper receiver, um, you know, you, putting a barrel, you buy an, a barrel and you buy an upper receiver and that barrel is so tight that you know, you can't get it, it, it doesn't want to go in there, you know, and you don't want to start banging on stuff, you don't want to start hammering on stuff. Uh, the, 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 enemy, <laughs> the enemy of these things is a hammer. You know, I try not to use a hammer anywhere if I don't have to, um, other than on 
the the tools that you know designed for punches and that kind of stuff i don't want to put a hammer directly to my rifle or to my barrels or anything like that uh, a little tr a little tip trick to uh get a barrel that is tight into a receiver um stick this in the oven okay stick your upper receiver in the oven and get it hot and expand the metal hot metal expands this diameter will get larger and take your barrel and stick it in the freezer okay and then cold metal contracts so that shrinks a couple tenths this grows a couple tenths now when you get ready you know grab yourself an oven mitt and hold your barrel because it's going to be warm and uh yeah coleman torch to heat it up does the same thing right and then as soon as you got that right bam you put them together because they're going to the they're going to draw the heat from each other. One's going to draw the cold from the other, and the other one's going to, and the, the, the temperatures are going to stabilize very fast, and those diameters are going to want to go back to what they were. So you want to be quick with that when you're sticking that barrel in there. And then you can use your barrel nut to, you know, tighten it down the rest of the way if it doesn't. As long as you get that uh, key on your barrel, the pin on your barrel, you know, at least part of the way into there, you're going to be able to guide that in the rest of the way with your barrel nut. So, uh, one of the things I like to do, and we've talked about it before, and in fact we did a tip video on it, is uh, black electrician's tape. You know, you got different areas where you're getting in here with uh, long punches, and you're coming in, and you're, you know, you're using these punches in different areas. And it's very easy for these punches to slide off and scratch up your anodizing. So a, a nice little tip, little trick, you know, you take some black electrician's tape. Duct tape works, you know, any kind of thick tape. Scotch tape's not so great because it's so thin and it rips very easily. But you can see now you've got that area protected with tape. And if you're in here working and you slip, you can see I'm not hurting anything. You know, if, I, if that tape wasn't there right now, I'd be nicking the heck out of that anodizing. So, you know. A little bit of black electrician's tape anywhere you want to put pins in, uh, upper receiver, lower receiver, any of those kind of things that, that will really save you a lot of trouble. So uh, you, you, you forget to do that. You don't put tape on there. And uh, you scratch up your, your anodizing. You get a little scratch on there. You know, and it's a brand new rifle. You just built it. And who wants a scratch on their brand new rifle, right? So... This stuff is great. Birchwood Casey's Aluma Black. A little bit goes a long way. We, we buy it in the big uh, jug size there. You don't need that much if you're just doing a, a little, little touch-ups at home and stuff. They make a little two-ounce bottle. You can put a little bit on a Q-tip, and you can dab it on that scratch and leave it sit for a few minutes, wipe it off, let it dry. And it's not hard coat anodized by any means. It's just black. All, all it does is really hide the scratch. It doesn't fill it in with anodizing or it, it isn't a hard protectant, but it doesn't give you the uh, shiny aluminum shining through on your scratch. And all this is is an oxidizer. It, you know, it, it oxidizes the aluminum and turns it black. But real handy stuff to have. Grind one side of the handle flat gives enough room as well I'm not sure what hand what do we uh, I'm not sure what you mean there Brian if you could expound a little bit uh, grind one side of the handle flat yeah yeah let me know what you're talking about there Brian I'm not sure what you mean um, so uh, another one I've shared a couple of times and uh, I, this is something, so, you know, they've got these clevis pins, right? You stick this in here and you 
put your pins in, you put your spring in, you put your detent in, and you follow it through with this. And, you know, and I've still lost them with this, trying to get it to, you know, and you pop it out too soon. Everything goes flying. Um, I've tried the credit card method. Uh, oh, for the punch. Grind one side of the punch. Yeah. In fact, this, uh, if you look, this, this punch that I have is actually ground. And it was bought that way. So yeah, flattening one side of the punch, especially for that long, where you got to get in here and start that, you know, the uh, bolt catch pin, having one side of that ground helps a lot. So, uh, you know, they make this tool, and I've used this with some success, but I have had it not succeed on me and I've tried the credit card method I've tried the razor blade method I've tried the quarter inch dowel rod method I've tried a whole bunch of methods and uh, watched a guy on Facebook one day do a quick little 15 second video and I thought man that is just the coolest thing so if my uh, I'll get my camera guy to lean way in here and I'm gonna show you how I do this now and I haven't lost a pin you, you watch, I'll, I'll, I'll screw this up and I'll send one flying here now that I'm trying to do it on film. But I haven't lost a pin or a detent since I've started doing it this way. Okay, so what I do is, let me make sure, that's the wrong spring. I need the, that's my ground down spring for the back one. So what I do is I put the spring in all the way. That's the wrong spring too, I think. Nope. Okay. Then. Okay. Now, so then what you do, once you've got that in place like that, okay, you just use the pin itself. Sweet. Yeah, I still got the, can't get my spring. Of course, when I'm going to film it, it gives me trouble, right? And then you make sure your notch is up. You push that in and you rotate down and there it is. Pretty slick. And since I've been doing it that way, I haven't launched one. Pretty slick. So along with that, okay, um, I really like the receivers that are threaded in the back end if you buy a receiver and it's not threaded it's already drilled um yeah i got a couple 80 percent laying around here russ <laughs> um if it's not threaded already you can tap that yourself if you have a tap wrench you know and you got a buddy who's a machinist um it's a 632 tap you can tap that back hole okay that holds your back pin spring and detent and i really like these because it's kind of a you know, you're, uh, when you're trying to put your buffer on and the spring's hanging out and you got to keep trying not to bend your spring and, you know, we all know what, you know, we've all been there and know what that is about, right? So you drop your pin in first. You drop your detent in. Now, I find that when you use these, the standard springs are a little bit too long. So I got to take them over on the belt sander and I got to grind about three sixteenths of an inch off of them because they'll compress too much. And then when it bottoms out, you aren't able to move your pin. But what you want instead of, you want that spring to be just kind of barely, when you've got it ground down, you want it to just be barely hanging out there because you're going to compress it quite a bit with the set screw. Okay. And you put your set screw in so that it's below flush and right 
pins in, detented, and you can do whatever you want with this now, and your spring and detent aren't going to fall out. You can manipulate it around, and you don't have to worry about that spring hanging out the back and trying to clear the end plate. And you know, Like I said, we've all been there. We all know what that's all about. So really cool little trick there that uh, if you don't buy one that's already threaded, you can go ahead and run a 632 tap in there, get you a little set screw, grind your pin down. 440? You know what, you're right, it might be a 440. 632 might be too big. You're right, I think it is a 440. Good catch. All right, uh, so a little trick we did a couple weeks ago here when uh, we were installing this ARV and uh, it was hand guard to upper alignment. So. You're putting a handguard on, and even with anti-rotation tabs, there's still a certain amount of movement, and it can be canted to one side or the other, and you're, you want to try to get that, you know, lined up as exact as possible. That way, if you do have to take this off, you know, and you, you want to put it back on, um, getting it realigned as best as possible, so you return to zero. So, here's a little trick that I do. I'll get my screws started and just barely snugged up. And then I'll take some kind of Picatinny, whether it's a front sight, a, uh, a hand stop, anything, something that has uh, a Picatinny clamp on it that you can bridge the two, right? It's across the hand guard and it's across the upper receiver and you tighten that down your hand guards now aligned to your upper it forces the alignment and then you tighten your screws down now this is still going to move around on me because my barrel nut isn't torque down on there it's only on their hand tight but I'm just showing you for reference and there you have it you have alignment between the handguard and the upper you force the alignment and there went my allen wrench camera guy will get it thank you <laughs> So, uh, you know, and, and I go back to uh, having the right tools for the job. You know, I love these. This thing is such a versatile tool. You know, this uh, real avid bench block, it holds your upper or your lower in place. It'll do your charging handle. It's got two different areas to hold your bolt. You can take your bolt out, and it's got a thing for removing your extractor. Um, you know, you can, this thing holds your upper in play, place, so you can work on it, put your spring and uh, detent in there, you know, really a handy tool, highly recommend one of them, just wish they were made in America, <laughs> but, uh, so, gas block alignment. Uh, that's one of the big things, you know, a lot of guys I see, you know, they're having problems with their rifle and it won't cycle. Um, they're having gas issues of, of one sort or another. Um, a lot of barrels today, they got a dimple in them, you know, and it's really easy to align that uh, gas block because when you tighten that down, it automatically goes into the dimple and lines itself up okay so you don't have a, a dimple on your barrel well you can buy a dimpling jig and you can dimple it yourself um, which you know is a good good thing to have right if you're going to build multiple rifles uh, you've changed out an a2 system and uh, you, you know you just don't have that dimple there for some reason so this is another one i've done on my uh, quick tips 
and it's called the spaghetti method, right? So what I got here is a piece of uncooked spaghetti. And I take that, drop it into the gas port hole, and snap it off flush with the barrel. And then I slide my gas block in place, turn it upside down, and then the spaghetti drops down into the hole. And I can only, you know, if, if I rotated that far enough, I'd break the spaghetti. But the idea is you don't want to break the spaghetti. You just want to find the middle ground there of where that thing rotates right there to there. So right there is about the middle. And we're going to tighten that down. And you can see it fell right into the dimple that pre-existed. So, you know, it's a, it's going to get you really close. Okay. And then you tighten that up. Uh, don't be afraid to put a little bit of blue Loctite on there. Don't put permanent Loctite on there. Um, you're going to want to maybe get that off of there someday, you know, for repairs or whatever, change out to an adjustable gas block, whatever it is, put a little blue Loctite or something on there that you can get off with a little heat. And, uh, but don't be afraid to use a little bit of Loctite here and there on screws and, and different things. Just don't use the permanent. And then when you drop that back down, obviously now you've got a piece of spaghetti in there. Just use your uh, cleaning rod that you use for cleaning and shove it through there, snap the spaghetti off. It comes right out and away you go. All right. Uh, so now you've got your... Uh, you got your gun all put together. You want to get it sighted in. I like, uh, there's two different methods I use for uh, sighting in. I got a laser bore sighter that I use. Okay. And when that just, so this uh, was brought to my attention a couple weeks ago. A friend of mine on here, uh, Mike, evil Mike Irwin. He's one of my hunting buddies. Uh, he's on the page here with us. And uh, he was setting up his 450. And he put a muzzle brake on it and then uh, went to sight it in and realized that with the muzzle brake on there, you don't get a whole lot of extension into the uh, barrel. So, you know, he's like, you know, let everybody know that they should probably bore sight before they put their muzzle brake on. That way you get the most reach back into there and you're going to get the most stability out of your laser bore sighter. But what you do with a laser bore sighter is real simple. Um, and in fact, they make some that are shaped like a bullet that feed right into your receiver. And when you close, they light up and you get the, those are, you know, doesn't matter if the uh, muzzle brake is on there or not. The laser shoots out the barrel and you can see, right, I've got a little laser dot. And then about 25 yards, maybe 30 yards, you're going to want to put that laser out there on your target, and you can dial your scope to that laser. It's going to get you close. It's not going to be exact. It's going to get you close. You know, you won't be shooting 20 feet off the paper trying to figure out where you're hitting. You're at least going to be on that target somewhere close enough that you can start dialing in. Now, the other thing I like to do, and I'll do this at home, is I, I call it the open bore method. Everybody has different names for it. I'll take my uh, upper off my gun with the scope mounted to it. I'll take the bolt out. I'll take the charging handle out. And I'll go out on my deck. And on the top flat rail of my deck, I'll lay this on the top flat rail. And I'll use a little wood clamp. And I'll clamp this down. And then I'll have someone, my daughter, my wife, whoever, take a basketball or a, a soccer ball something and go out in the yard and... I look through the bore until I can see the basketball until the basketball fills, And it's about 40, 50 yards usually for a basketball type object for it to fill the entire bore. And I can see that basketball through there. And then I come up and look through the scope and I can dial the scope right to that uh, basketball. That's a, a really good method, too. Um, that always puts me right on the paper. Um, I, I've gotten really lucky several times, and, you know, I, I've been within a three-inch using that open bore method. I actually like it a little bit better than I do the uh, laser bore cider. So, uh, you know, when you're building 
you got your table set up and you're working with all these little tiny pieces and you got little springs and you got little detents and uh, just all these different little pieces. We've all dropped, boom, and it hits and it hits the floor and you know where it goes from there is anybody's guess. Usually the vacuum cleaner will find it. Um, laying, taking a, a thin towel and a white towel and laying it down over your building table as you're working with these small things. If you drop that little detent or that spring, whatever it might be, it's going to hit that uh, white towel and it's going to stay right there. It's not going to bounce. It's not going to do the bounce of disappearance. And it's you're on, it's on a white towel, so it's going to stick out. You know, you're going to see it very quickly. Uh, just a you know, and, and don't use one of your wife's good white towels. Don't use one of her good terry cloth towels. You'll probably be in trouble. So, uh, you know, go, go to Kmart and buy a cheap $3 towel. Uh, you'll use it and use it and use it. So, uh, I, you've heard me say a million times, uh, you know, if you build one, you're going to build another and you're going to, you know, it's like Lay's potato chips, right? You can't build, you can't build one. And, uh, ultimately you're going to want a 300 blackout and then you're going to want a 350 legend and you're going to want these different calibers. Um, there's a little bit of danger involved in that because so many of them, some of them use the same magazines. Some of them use the same, uh, yeah, they use the same magazines. They use uh, the same bolt carrier groups. So um, taking something and labeling, because, you know, your, your gun is labeled as to what it is. Your barrel's labeled to what it is. So you know just by looking at your barrel what barrel you've got on the gun. Making sure you keep your ammo separated. If you've got 223 and 300 blackout and you're going to the range and you don't want to put a 300 blackout into a 223, it will load and you will not have a good day. <laughs> your day will end very badly. Um, so taking your magazines, uh, you know, if you know somebody with a laser, getting them laser engraved, the, you know, what specific caliber they are and only using them for that caliber. Um, taking a, a, an engraving pen and writing on there 300 blackout, you know, 223, whatever it is, and making sure that you keep those dedicated to that ammo. And, you know, it's readily visible. You can see it, and you know exactly what you're loading into that gun. Um, you know, just it's just going to save you a world of trouble. Um, we've all seen blown-up guns when uh, guys put the wrong ammo in them. And, uh, unfortunately, the way these are designed, sometimes, uh, obviously, 350 legend isn't going to fit into a 223 or probably a 300 blackout. I don't think that a 300 or a 350 legend is going to load into a 300 blackout. Um, but, uh, you know, just to avoid confusion and problems, you want to make sure you label your magazines. It's a good habit to get into and keeping them separated, having different boxes and, you know, just being very aware of that. Um, I think that's all I got wrote down. Um, yeah. So, you know, there's a, there's a million tips and tricks. Um, you know, I, I could probably be on here another hour if I sat down and wrote out the whole list and, and showing you, um, YouTube is your friend. Um, and, and finding a forum, it's finding some foreign for yeah, forums. Oh yeah. The little magnet metal bowl, Caleb's, uh, I've seen those little magnet bowls. Um, they got a magnet built into the bottom. It's a metal bowl. And as you're working, you just put all your little pieces parts in there and it, you know, they get stuck inside the bowl. That's a great thing to do. Um, and an oops kit, right? Uh, we've talked about oops kits in the past. Um, you know, it's the springs, the detents, you know, you can pick up an oops kit. Well, you used to be able to pick up an oops kit for about five bucks. They're probably $10 now in today's prices, but, uh, having those extra springs and detents and, uh, you know, uh, uh, a great thing to do, too, is go to Kmart, Walmart, wherever, and um, uh, get yourself a cheap tackle box, plastic tackle box. And, you know, with the trays, the trays are in there and it opens and, you know, get you a little, uh, what's them, you know, the, you can make this, uh, the labels, right? You dial in, right? Get you a little label maker and put labels on all the different, and you know, uh, hammer springs and trigger springs and this detent and that spring and having 
a, a little tackle box laid out with all that extra stuff in it. We acquire, I, I could reach down here and find a box just full of extra parts right now. I need a tackle box, right? And having that tackle box laid out so you know exactly and you're not rifling through a box taking 10 minutes trying to find a specific spring, you know? The, the uh, a place for everything and everything in its place, right? So, uh, Again, there's, you know, I could spend hours trying to tell you guys all the little tips and tricks and stuff that I've learned over the years and that I know. Um, YouTube is your friend and finding a forum on Facebook like the A Architect group where we, uh, um, we, we, don't, we don't really put up with a lot of the shenanigans that can happen on a lot of groups. You know, the, the, uh, the name calling, the belittling, the, uh, uh, you know, we're here to help. Right. And we want everybody in that group to be there to help the new guy. And, uh, you know, we all didn't know at one time. Right. We didn't we weren't born with this knowledge. None of us were born with this knowledge. Our dads taught us. Our friends taught us. Um, our mentors taught us. Uh, our teachers taught us. You know, if you went to gunsmithing school, uh, somebody taught us how to do this. Or even if we taught ourselves, we learned it somehow. And not everybody is uh, not everybody learns the same. So if somebody asks a question, you know, we want to be there to help them. We want to be able there there to answer that question and not in a belittling or condescending way. We just want to help. That's what we're all about. So, uh, you know, join some groups. Uh, make sure it's a good group. If it's not a good group, you know, no shame in bailing on it. Um, watch YouTube videos and, uh, you know, and, and just Google AR-15 tip building tips and tricks. You know, there's just... You'll get pages of information, and I'll, you're going to get a lot of repeat information, but every now and then you'll get that one that's like, oh, hey, I didn't know that one. That's a good one. Um, so uh, don't forget, send in your show ideas. If you'd like us to, to see us do a show, um, we got a new thing we're working on right now. Um, we're going to start having an A Architect of the Week coming through our page. Um, you guys are submitting photographs of their builds. And uh, we're going to uh, start having uh, picking guys once a week to be kind of a featured A architect of the week. You know, him, her, or her, and their gun. Um, a little bio telling you a little bit about themselves, a little bit about their gun. Uh, you know, what some of the parts they use, some of the, the things that they've done over the years. And uh, we're going to have them, their, their gun will be uh, the cover photo for the week. And we're going to have a little fun and, and start learning a little bit about each other in the group. And uh, so submit your pictures of your guns, uh, your builds, and uh, we'll, we might be in contact with you through the messages to get a, a few extra pictures and some information from you. And uh, you can be an A architect of the week. So let, we'll have a little fun with that. Uh, don't forget the deal of the week in tune with uh, building. We got $10 off our uh, full AR build toolkits. And, uh, oh, yeah, I got a, I got some new ink, right? So, <laughs> yeah. I, I've had uh, about 20 people ask me, what's all that mean? So if you're over 50 you probably know what that means but that is uh led zeppelin led zeppelin four album the uh four symbols and kind of the smoky psychedelic 60s look to it right i'm a big led zeppelin fan have been all of my life and uh been threatening for 20 years to get a led zeppelin tattoo and i finally went and did it so i'm really i'm really happy with it i love it i think it's really cool so uh, yeah, Russ threw up his uh, marksman for vets. Uh, don't forget, uh, you know we had a uh, we posted a thing about the 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 guy that sent in the thank you letter and how it kind of changed his life a little bit that someone did uh, did that for him. And uh, my cousin uh, hit Russ up to donate some uh, I believe it was some stock parts that he had left from upgrading his guns. And then uh, another guy in our group, I, I can't remember his name, I'm sorry. I, I, I will definitely get you a plug next week. Um, he owns a laser engraving company and he offered to do free laser engraving for Russ on the builds for the uh, veterans. So uh, again, I apologize for not catching your name and being able to say it here and giving you a plug, but I will make sure I do that next week. Um, but we do appreciate you doing that for Russ. And uh, again, you know, 
if you got gently used parts, Russ is glad to take them. I know he's working on another rifle right now that we donated a handguard to, and uh, he is currently actively looking for a recipient for that gun. So uh, inter can always love to see what he comes up with, the different Cerakote jobs and the things that he does with those, uh, the, the themes that he does. You know, the, the, he's done a Navy, he's done an Army, he's done, you know, he's just done a bunch of these different themes for these veterans based on what they did when they were in the service. So uh, uh, I think that's it. Um, we'll see you all next week. Uh, thank you all for being here. Oh, yeah, today is the first day of squirrel goose and dove here in ohio hunting season is upon us and i couldn't be happier i will be in the woods this afternoon seeing if i can get me some tree rats so uh remember you don't have to be an expert to build your own ar you know, don't have to be an expert to upgrade it or maintain it we're here to help you do that hit us up and we're glad to glad to be a part of that thanks and we'll see y'all next week